Welcome, everybody, to this episode of Popcorn Diaries. I'm Joe. And I'm Adriana. And today's episode, we are going to cover the Academy Awards. We're going to cover Best Actress, Best Actor, Best Director, Best Animated Feature, and we're going to sum it all up with Best Picture. So let's go ahead and dive right into Best Actress. Well, there are five leading ladies nominated for Best Actress, including Amy Adams, Kate Blanchett, Sandra Bullock, Judi Dunch, and Meryl Streep. There's a powerhouse of ladies on this nomination. Yes, there are. And it's really hard to decide who should take the Oscar. All the ladies that are nominated this year have a long-standing career. Um, for example, Meryl Streep, has this is her 18th nomination. Well, I did not realize She's that. actually won three Oscars, um, but this is her 18th nomination. So she's got a long-standing career alongside Judy Dench, who has been nominated seven times and actually won an Oscar for Shakespeare in Love. So it's really tough to tell who's going to take the Oscar. My nomination is going to go to Sandra. I think she's going to take it this year. Her role in Gravity was very, very strong. And it's just a big contender this year. I just think that overall in performance, she's the one who came out on top. So I definitely think that she's going to be taking the Oscar this year. What about you? Who do you pick for Best Actress. I'm going to have to go with Amy Adams on this one is taking the Oscar. And here's my reasoning on that. She's been nominated five times in the last eight years, and the Academy has a way of awarding those folks that are due. Okay, now she doesn't give a great performance in this movie. I highly recommend you see it if you haven't, but I'm going to go ahead and play it safe and say it's going to be Amy Adams. But secretly, I think it's going to go to Kate Blanchard. You think so? I think so. Her performance in Blue Jasmine is absolutely great. I can understand why you would see that, and I can understand why you would choose Amy Adams. You know, she's also been nominated for quite a few other things. This is her first nomination as a lead actress, so it's a big step up for her. Um, She's never won an Academy Award, but I just, I don't know. There's something about Sandra's performance and the fact that Gravity has just really stood the test of time in theaters that I think is going to to be an overall factor in who gets the Academy in the end, but we'll see come March who actually gets this award. So stay tuned, folks. Let's see who gets it. So let's move on to the leading men. Who's your choice for leading men this year? For uh, Best Actor, uh, I've got to go with Matthew McConaughey. His performance in Dallas Buyers Club is unbelievable. However, I will say that with the condition of Bruce Dern could sneak in there. His performance is also exceptional, and he hasn't won an Academy Award yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they might uh, give it to him because uh, there's rumors that this might be his last picture. So they might give him that farewell Oscar, which they've done in the past. That's true. I also agree with you. In the same category, I picked Matthew McConaughey. I think that this role was outstanding for him. It is Uh, revolutionary for him playing this role, really pushed his boundaries as an actor. He really gave it his all physically, emotionally. He put it all on the line for this role. You could really see that in this picture. He actually already took the Golden Globe for this. So this is actually his first Oscar nomination. Uh, Again, I also kind of wonder if they're going to give it to Bruce Stern because of the fact that he has been in in over 100 pictures, people. If you are not familiar with his career, definitely Definitely check out some of his things. He is a great supporting actor. Um, He's done some lead roles, but he has been in so many movies and you never even realize that he's there. That's how good he is. He may take it, but honestly, my vote goes to Matthew McConaughey. His transformation in this movie is incredible. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give away too much here for the folks if you haven't seen it. So check it out, folks. You will not be disappointed with Matthew's performance. All right. So that moves us on to Best Director. Adriana, what do you got? Well, this is a power pack of directors. I mean, these directors, uh, with the exception of um, Alexander Payne, who this is basically his debut in Hollywood. His other uh, film uh, had some nominations in the Cannes film uh, categories and things like that. But this is really his first Hollywood blockbuster film. Yes, it is. He joins David O. Russell, Alfonso Cuaron, Um, Steve McQueen and Martin Scorsese. So this is a powerhouse of direction. I mean, all these directors have been nominated for various uh, Academy Awards in different fields, including direction, writing and editing. 
So it's really a toss up for me. I'm just trying to judge the direction category was really, really tough because they're all such great directors. And the pictures that they directed this year were just phenomenal films. So I don't know. I think I'm going to give it to Alfonso Cuaron with Gravity. Great pick, because I am going to have to agree with you on that. That was also my number one pick. I think Alfonso does such a riveting job of directing these actors in this film. You're just on the edge of your seat. He truly, truly engages you in this story. And I mean, remember, people, that these actors are pretty much on sets. They're not in outer space. All the special effects are not there for them to view. So it's it's a really tough job to direct actors and try to get them in that moment to give you the performance that you really require to match up with the stunning effects that you are building up to. That's correct. But that's not to discount a couple other movies that might come from behind. As best director, uh, you never can discount uh, Martin Scorsese because he is truly one of the greatest directors of all time. And uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if Steve McQueen for 12 Years a Slave sneaks in there, too. So Steve McQueen, this happens to be his actually his first major film in Hollywood. He's actually directed a ton of short films, but this being only his second feature-length film, it's outstanding that he's actually already been nominated for an Academy Award. I mean, this film is by far, you know, it deserves the recognition it's getting. It's a wonderful film, a great story. So it definitely deserves to be up there, but I just have to give him props for, you know, barely starting out in Hollywood with a major major motion film and getting that first Academy Award nomination right away. Yeah, quite a feat in uh, these days uh, in Hollywood. But again, I'm going to stick with Gravity. I think you're right on the money with that one. So we both agree on that one. So let's go ahead and move it up to Best Animated Feature, one of my favorite categories. Adriana, who did you pick for that? So in the animated features, we have The Crudes, Despicable Me Too, Ernest and Celestine, Frozen, and The Wind Rises. Now, These are, again, are great films. Great, great films. The Crudes was just hilarious and outstanding. Um, The performances given by all the actors in that, including Emma Stone and uh, Nicolas Cage, was phenomenal. And then we had Despicable Me 2 with Steve Carell, Mm -hmm. and that was also outstanding film. Yeah, that was a very good film. We also have it alongside with Ernest and Celestine. Um, I didn't get to see this film, but I was watching the preview for it, and it looks so spectacular. It's such a, a, a strong story of a mouse befriending a bear, which is really great. Beautiful, beautiful visuals in this movie. We also have another feature by Hayao Miyazaki, which is The Wind Rises. And I have to say, I love Miyazaki's work. His work has always been phenomenal. His imagination is stunning. Everything that he has brought out, Howl's Moving Castle, Spirited Away, uh, My Neighbor Totoro, Mm -hmm. all these great films have, you know, really, really a great repertoire of films. Yes, he does. Um, But... I'm going to have to say that Frozen is going to take the cake. Great choice, because that was mine also. The reason I'm going to say that is it just has, it's a little film, that it's a very short film, Mm -hmm. that took me by surprise. I saw the the trailer for this film and thought, oh, it might be interesting, I guess. I waited and waited, and I didn't go see this until about a couple weeks ago when my daughter finally talked me into go seeing it. And I was just amazed and fell in love with this feature. It's got such great musical performances, stunning visual effects. It's a gorgeous story. Um, the story is very solid, so that's why I'm giving it to Frozen. I think that it's going to take the Academy Award. There is no contest in this category. It is going to be Frozen. Disney, of course, no. Nobody does it better year in and year out than Disney. The animation is top notch. The storytelling is great. The whole package is there. And what just kills me about this is the one scene where they're going after the carrot, and that's between the snowman and the moose. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I was laughing so hard. It is so good. My vote to Frozen, no doubt about it. I mean, I won't discredit or discount that Hayao Miyazaki might come out a winner this year. He has been nominated for a few um, Academy Awards. He did win it for Chihiro, 
but you never know. He might come out on top again this year. Yeah, he might sneak in there. I mean, one thing we've learned in the past uh, Academy Awards uh, is there's always a surprise or two. Yes. You know, so uh, that could uh, certainly be one of them. So that moves us on to Best Picture, my favorite category. Yes, this category is definitely the one that everyone waits for. It is definitely the crowning top of the Academy Awards. And this year's crop of movies is just, it's so hard to make a choice. Yeah, there is not a bad movie in this entire group. No. I mean, most years, well, not most years, but there are several years where we see that there is one movie that stands out on top. There is one movie that we know is going to kind of sweep the Oscars because the performances are great, the editing is great, the direction is great, the acting is great. But this year, you just have a spectacular crop of movies, including American Hustle, Captain Phillips, The Dallas Buyers Club, Mm -hmm. Gravity, Her, Nebraska, Philomena, 12 Years a Slave, and The Wolf of Wall Street. I mean... How can you go wrong? It is really tough to make a choice. So let's talk about these movies a little bit. Okay. I got to say, of these movies, all of them are very dramatic. All of them have pack a power punch in the story. Yes, they do. Some of them push the boundaries, like the Dallas Buyers Club. They really push the boundaries in the story. Yes, they did. We do have a little bit of high drama, like in Captain Phillips and Mm -hmm. Gravity. We have some very compelling stories like Her and Nebraska and Philomena. And then we have outstanding performances like 12 Years a Slave and American Hustle. So this year, I'm just like really, really not sure where to go, but... What do you think about this year's crops of movies before we say uh, who we pick? Well, like I said before, every one of them is very, very good. I really struggled on which one to pick as my uh, favorite for the Academy Award because they are all so good. I'm going to have to go with Gravity. I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> the performances there are so good. Everything in this movie is good. The sound is good. The visuals are good. The score is good. It's a riveting movie. If you haven't seen it, go see this movie. However, I will say that I'm a little nervous about a couple of the other movies because they are also so strong. I would love to see Gravity win. That's going to be my choice, but my gut tells me it's going to be 12 Years a Slave. I think that think one so? yep, I think that one's going to get it and I and, and the reason is the Academy voters love to pick a winner about a story that's important. This is a true story. This is an important issue. I agree with you on that. 12 Years a Slave is definitely a movie that pushes the boundaries and makes us take a look at our history, where we come from, and shows us how not to relive this in the future. The other one that I actually think um You know, Gravity, yes, I do think that Gravity is going to take the Academy Award for this. But I'm more nervous about the Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah, and you should be because that is also hits on a social issue that is really hits home for a lot of people. Yeah, this is a story coming from, you know, early in the 80s where HIV was such a scary topic. And we're seeing it now. We're taking a look at it. We're analyzing it. And this movie just really, really is top-notch, performance-wise, story-wise. So I'm afraid that Dallas Buyers Club might sneak in there and take over Gravity, but Gravity definitely is the um, favorite choice of both of us. Uh, So we'll see who actually takes the Academy Award for Best Picture this year. Yeah, so we agreed on quite a bit on this episode, which is kind of rare for us. So let's kind of wrap the whole thing up by what picture do you think is going to scoop up the most Academy Awards? Honestly, this year, I don't think there's going to be a top winner. I think it's going to be a mix of categories um, just because we have such strong contenders with all the movies, with all the nominations for actresses and actors. I don't think there's going to be a clear top winner, but if there is one, I think it's going to be Gravity. Gravity held the box office for months, which is unheard of these days, just like Frozen. Frozen is still in theaters, by the way. They just released it with a sing-along version. So these are movies that are definitely sticking with the public, and obviously the Academy nominations are going to take that into effect. What about you? Uh, I agree. I think uh, Gravity is going to scoop up the most, specifically because of uh, film editing, best original score, sound editing, sound mixing, best visual effects. So I think it has the potential to pick up possibly six Oscars. However, I will say that 12 Years a Slave 
is also very strong in many categories, costume design and so on. It could also scoop up four to five to six. So I think it's going to be between the two, but I agree with you. I think gravity is going to nose it out. All right, everyone. So those were our choices for Academy Award winners this year. So stay tuned and watch the Oscars early in March with Ellen DeGeneres, who's going to be hosting this year, and see if we chose correctly or if we were completely off the mark. Next time on Popcorn Diaries, we're going to be discussing sci-fi movies, our favorites in the genre, top three for each of us, and any other tidbits that we might have about this genre. Both Joe and I love sci-fi movies. Yes, so, we do. So until next time, I'm Adriana. And I'm Joe. And this was Popcorn Diaries. Welcome, everybody, to this... This what? This installment? This version? This this episode? Episode. Thank you. Episode. Hold on. It's an episode. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this episode of Popcorn Diaries. Today we're going to go and go. We um, welcome everyone to the Academy Awards episode edition. <laughs> you want me to do Not, it? No, <laughs> I got I'm this. I'm not even I, doing anything. I've got this. Like, right. okay. <clears throat> so we'll see you next time. Um, popcorn. <laughs> no.